Michael, do you know what the leading cause of death for pregnant people is? Pregnant people? Mm -hmm. Mothers? Women? If you'd like to call them mothers, not all of them are mothers, but if you'd like to call them that. What are they if they're not mothers? They're pregnant people. <laughs> Michael Knowles, the famous YouTube podcaster, is not a stranger to controversy. The woke mob has received much of his criticism, and he has been doing it again. Watch how he destroys this woke medical student. So you're telling me that in order to be a moral person, I need to accept the idea that a man, someone who is born a man and looks like a man, can really become a woman. That's, that's a, a prerequisite of my being a moral person. I mean, yes. To, to me it is, because if you are trying to deny someone of their identity and deny what their life experience is, then that doesn't seem like a moral stance to me. Michael Knowles finds himself at odds with woke culture on this issue of gender. He never agrees with the notion that you can identify as a woman after you were born as a male, and vice versa. A simple fact, but the woke mob is not having any of it. I would yes. like to identify, I do identify actually, mm -hmm. as the correct person on this issue of abortion. Okay. I identify as being correct and more correct than you on this issue. And I would just ask that you accept and affirm my uh, identity. Do you? Well, you are not a medical professional, and abortion and pregnancy no, is a medical concern. That's not your identity. That is my I promise you that's my identity. <laughs> he has clear and firm convictions about where he stands on issues that define modern woke culture. Michael Knowles absolutely cooked this gay guy who tried to convince him that he should accept it when they act like women as men. I, I would encourage you to behave as a man, is what I would do. Because you, you are a man, and I don't know... How exactly you came to the point where you think you're a woman or very much would like to be a woman, but you aren't. And I don't think anyone who is uh, affirming your delusion is helping you. I don't think that they're actually an ally of, of yours. I think they're lying to you and I think it's very disrespectful and I think it will not lead to your flourishing. I think it will only immiserate you. And so uh, you, you might hate me for telling you the truth, but I think the truth will set you free. You see, Michael Knowles was a professional actor. The trans guy tried to shame him by insinuating that Knowles is low-key gay because of a gay character he played when he was a student in Yale. And the very fact that this always happens with the sexual revolutionaries, they always say, you know, if you, if you don't agree with the idea that a man can secretly be a woman, then maybe you're a transgender or something. I think the implication is quite clear, which is that you recognize there's something obviously disordered about, about this identity. That's why in, in your attempt to insult people who are pointing out the truth, you're accusing them of that very same thing. But, but that in, in, inclination, that impulse to, to see that as a disorder should be instructive to you. And I, th I think it could, it could help you if, if you would allow yourself not to just cast it on someone else, but to look in the mirror. Woke ideology often frames individuals as victims based on their identity. This narrative suggests that certain groups are inherently oppressed by society and that systemic forces are rigged against them. And so Michael Knowles had a question for this trans activist. So the question becomes, how does one know that someone with the total physical appearance of a man, how can one know that that person really is a woman? Do you have an answer to that question? For a trans activist who says we oppress trans people because we don't affirm their gender, while looking totally opposite from the gender they identify as, it should be easy to explain, right? How can, you're, to clarify, you're asking how can somebody know if they are a woman? And how can I know if that person is a woman? If, if not by the physical attributes, their natural and enduring biological sex, what's the alternative to that? So my, my response to you is then a question of, what is the purpose of knowing another person's sexual, well, sexual see, there, there identity? You are. Or per, but let me finish. Yeah. If it's not for the premise of reproduction, hmm? and there's no, no, no. there's no need to relate, outside of that, then I don't quite understand why we would need to question. Even trans activists don't know how to correctly identify transgenders. So why do they get triggered so easily when people call them by what they see? Or, so this, is what, this is what happens whenever you ask a transgender activist to explain even the basic premise of the movement is they'll immediately say, well, who cares? Why, why are you so obsessed with this? I'm not obsessed with this. I'm not the one who started sending men into the women's bathroom and taking away their trophies and castrating kids. I'm perfectly happy with the way things have worked for thousands of years. It is the transgender activists who are trying to upend everything. And so I think it's at least my right to ask the question, okay, what is the premise of your movement? But they always deflect from that. They always withdraw from the debate. They always try to change the subject because there is no answer. So you
After getting totally cooked, she tried to redeem herself by bringing up ancient pagan priests who were men and wore dresses. This was to prove that trans has always existed and should be accepted. And indigenous communities have used two-spirit uh, personas for the in entirety of their culture. And so that leads me to my question. When you say that transgenderism must be eradicated from public life entirely, I ask you, Mr. Knowles, how can we eradicate something that has been here as long as humans have? Well, yeah, there have been all sorts of crazy, terrible ideas for a very long time, too. You, you, you're pointing to civilizations that committed human sacrifice, okay? You're saying that some ancient pagan tribe worshipped demons and therefore we need to castrate children. That's not a good argument. Yes, that's true. There were all sorts of terrible tribes. In fact, as recently as a little over 500 years ago, the Aztecs here in the Western Hemisphere slaughtered 80,000 people in a sacrifice to one of the demons that they worshipped within the span of four days. That's not a recommendation of doing Doing that, I don't think that we ought to consider it. And as woke ideologies flood schools and the media, the one institution that someone would least expect to be woke did it too. The Marine Corps and the Air Force tweeted out pictures of rainbows and wished everyone a happy Pride Month. The Marines declared their commitment to, quote, fostering an environment free from discrimination and treating, quote, all equally with dignity and respect. Now, nice as all that sounds, that is not the job of the U.S. military. The U.S. military is not an HR department at some millennial tech startup. The job of the military is to kill our enemies. At least, it was. Michael Knowles sees it as a complete joke. He sees no reason for the military to try and accommodate people's sexual tastes and appetites. Diversity has no place in the military. When, when servicemen suit up and they're getting ready for battle, do they put on diverses? Do they, do they button up all of their diverses and then go out there to fight? No, they put on their uniforms because diversity is not what you want in the military. You want absolute uniformity. I'm not saying uniformity of race or uniform, but you want uniformity at a deep level. You want everyone to be doing the same thing and you don't want people expressing their weird sexual desires or appetites. Will Ferrell, the famous actor, decided to do a movie promoting woke trans ideas. This is what Knowles had to say. Speaking of transvestites, Will Ferrell is making a movie with Netflix. Not a comedy movie, though he's a comedian. He's making a, com he's making a serious movie about transgenderism. I love this country so much, I just don't know if it loves me back right now. I'm not really afraid of these people. I'm afraid of hating myself. There it is. From his own mouth, he said he is afraid of hating himself. Michael pointed out that the problem is always with the individual trans people and not the society. That's not real. What I'm really afraid of is hating myself. Right, right. That's what it's about. That's exactly what it's about. And why does he have that fear? Because he knows that what he's saying and the way that he's living is not true. It's not rational. It, it doesn't accord with reality. That's what it's about. No, even when society does accept them, they're still very anxious and very depressed and very likely to commit suicide. And actually, it doesn't, doesn't matter how the society reacts, that the problem seems to be, the, the uh, killer seems to be inside the house. 